We're back with filmmaker Ken Burns, whose latest work is Jackie Robinson, which airs Monday and Tuesday nights on PBS. Simple starter question, why Jackie Robinson? He's the most important person in the history of baseball. He may not be the best player, but he's the most important because he was this pioneer finally making the game what it had always claimed to be, the national pastime, by being the first African American in the modern age to cross the color line. You know, we don't focus too much. We say he'd cross the color line, but we don't talk about it. And we felt it was important to tell a story. The we is my daughter Sarah Burns and the filmmaker David McMahon, who we've been working for several years on this deep dive and not just the narrow story of what we're familiar with, that 1947 turning the other cheek Christ-like thing, but the whole story from the birth in 1919 to his death in 72. If I had a room jammed with trophies, awards, and citations, and a child of mine came into that room and asked what I had done in defense of black people and decent whites fighting for freedom, and if I had to tell that child, I had kept quiet, that I had been timid, I would have to mark myself a total failure in the whole business of living. Jackie Robinson. Tell us about where America was during this period to set the stage for him. Well, it's roiling about race in ways that we are right now. And I think what's so interesting about the story of Jackie Robinson is it resonates with today in so many ways, from Confederate flags to driving while black to stop and frisk to all the things that we think are the modern stuff we're dealing with with regard to race. There was, after World War II, a real push, and there had been for many years in the black press and in the leftist press to sort of integrate baseball. This was the great symbol of America, the national pastime, and why didn't we live out the true meaning of our creed and, and bring someone up? And through a whole set of very interesting accidents, Jackie became that person. And you, when you realize when he came up on April 15, 1947, Martin Luther King was a junior at Morehouse College. Uh, Truman hadn't integrated the military. There'd been no Brown versus Board of Education. Rosa Parks hadn't thought of not giving up her seat, though Jackie had done it three years earlier in a, a military uh, base in Texas, Fort Hood. Um, he's really, as, as King himself said, a, a sit-inner before sit-ins, a freedom rider before freedom rides. Yeah, and what was their action? Well, you know, it was in one area a sense of, wow, we could kind of reference our better angels. But of course, the baser instincts, which we notice all around us even today, uh, had their full say. So were their death threats and black cats put on the field and the most, uh, you know, withering racist stuff directed at him. And he found himself besieged at every corner. I mean, one of the amazing things is, if he hadn't been married to this extraordinary woman, Rachel Robinson, who's still with us, uh, I'm not sure that Jackie could have made it. I want to get to that in a second. But first, I want to play a clip here. Pitchers threw at his head. More than once, runners sprinting towards first base spiked Robinson with their cleats. And a hard slide by Robinson would not go unnoticed by opposing infielders. Away from the field, Jackie spent little time with his teammates. On the road, he still had to stay at Jim Crow hotels and took his meals alone. Jimmy Cannon, writing in the New York Post, Call Jackie the loneliest man I've ever seen in sports. The loneliest man in sport. Talk about that loneliness. When this man passed away at age 53, he looks old and stooped like he's a white-haired, retired Pullman car porter. It was from the load he carried. I'm 62. He was 53. You know, he didn't... He carried something for so many of us, and not just African Americans, but as he used to say, decent whites, people who were concerned with advancing the progress of America. And that's why the story is so important. And the fact that a lot of us talk the talk, he actually walked the walk. He got up every day and he went out to try to make lives better for everyone else. And that was an amazing accomplishment. What did carrying all that weight, what kind of character did it require, and what did it 
do. We think of him as the guy who just Christ-like turned the other cheek, but in fact, he was angry and competitive and, 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 and uh, impatient with uh, being told as African Americans had for decades, just wait, be patient, be patient, be patient, it'll all come. And it wasn't coming, and he was pushing and pushing and pushing. So the turning of the other cheek makes it more interesting. And I think our film is attempting to say there's a much more complicated person than the mythology. And by the way, that complicated person is even more mythological in its status. And I think that has its cost. I mean, to have put up with that day after day after day uh, is an incredible burden to bear. When Branch Rickey, the Dodgers club president, brought him on, signed him, his advice was get married. Yeah. Why? <laughs> well, he knew that he'd need somebody, uh, as we all do, to get through the, the, the dark nights of the soul that were inevitably going to come. And, you know, and, and Robinson sort of swallowed hard and said, I'm willing to do this if you're willing to take a chance on Amy. But he said Mary, and he fortunately had been seeing, was engaged to this remarkable woman, uh, Rachel Robinson. Talk about her a little bit, the, the, her strength. I don't think you could have had Jackie Robinson without Rachel. She was able to provide a kind of safe haven for him, uh, to go out to the ballpark and could see what was happening, and then they didn't have to bring it home. There wasn't a kind of rot that developed there. It's This film, if anything, is this love story. It's a multi-generational portrait of an African-American family, which you don't often get, set across an extraordinary set of decades of change in the United States, in our national pastime, in our politics, and in race, but it's also an intimate story of two people negotiating very, very complicated shoals and eddies in the course of his professional life. You talked to President Obama and the First Lady, so let's take a look at that clip. Just being able to find that solace and that peace to withstand all the negative energy, um, you know, it's hard to do that alone. Uh, so. There's nothing more important than family, than, than a real partnership, which is probably what made him such a great man, because he had the judgment to find a partner uh, that, well, I, I think that's it's true. I mean, I think that's a, a, a sign of his character, that he chose a woman that was his equal. I don't think he would have had Jackie Robinson without Rachel. So there's your point about Rachel Robinson. but. Yeah. The, the First Lady and the President don't show up in a lot of documentaries. No, they were very generous with their time, but I think what was so clear, maybe to them as well as to us, is that here you have four people, two couples, Jackie and Rachel and, and the President and the First Lady sort of hurtling through different times and spaces, and yet for a moment there, they're united. And for a second, Jackie and Rachel and, and the President and the First Lady sort of merge, and they also seem utterly human. A couple of questions about the process here. What was it like having Jackie Robinson in your head? I, um, I find it incredibly moving. He was a doer and not a sayer. And I think I spend way too much of my time talking and not doing. And he makes me want to make the world better, not just make it better for my own little niche, but make it better for others. And that is exactly what he wants. You know, at the very end of the film, it's a little bit of a downer. He's not sure he's had it made, actually, in fact. But then you think that every April 15th, every single ball player puts on his uniform in every stadium in the major leagues, that it's the only number retired in every stadium. He appeals to the best in us, and that's what makes it just not only a great story in sports, but a great story in American history, and in, and in some ways, a great human story. Ken Burns, thanks very much.